singing has just been tremendous. Gospel of John, chapter 13. If you'd like to turn there with me, please. The Gospel of John, chapter 13. Just going to read one verse, verse 30. I see pages still turning, so I'm going to wait till you catch up. Gospel of John. Let's stand together, please, and read this one verse together. He, then having received the sop, went out immediately, went immediately out, and it was night. Let's read it one more time. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Thank you. You can be seated. The fellow that's spoken about here, he had just left one of the greatest fellowships that anyone could have ever had. He just left the Last Supper with the Lord Jesus Christ. He had just left a place where the Lord, after supper had ended, girded himself with a towel and proceeded to wash the disciples' feet. That included he, that's spoken of in this verse. Jesus did not leave out anybody. Now that he that's spoken of here is a fellow by the name of Judas. We know him in the Bible as a traitor. We know him as in the Bible as the treasure or the bag toter of the group. He's the one that was in charge of what little money they had. This he is spoken of here had the greatest privilege that anyone could ever have. He traveled with the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere that the Lord went, he went. He was selected and trusted as the treasure of the group, as I've already said. Judas witnessed many, many miracles that the Lord performed. He saw Jesus open the eyes of the blind. He saw the cripple walk again because of the touch of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw the dumb speak and he even witnessed the dead being raised back to life. That's Judas, set under the greatest preacher that ever graced the earth, the Lord Jesus Christ. I've often wondered what it would be like to sit under the Lord and listen to his voice. They had no microphones like we have here. They had no instruments to back them up. But everybody could hear the Lord plainly when he spoke. He spoke to thousands of people at the same time, and yet all of them heard him clearly. I would love to have been in a crowd to hear the greatest preacher that ever opened his mouth preach the Word of God, and that's the Lord Jesus. I didn't have that chance. But Judas did. I cannot imagine how he turned out after all of that. He sold his soul. He ruined his life. He left the very best that ever could have been afforded to anybody. He turned his back on the blessed Son of God. And the Bible says here that he went out into the night. I want to speak to you today on the subject, 
about Judas and him going out into the night. Number one, the Bible says and teaches that he was without, out in that darkness and out in that night, he was without the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had left the presence of the Lord behind. He had left that fellowship behind. I dread the day when folks, even today, live without the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first time in the Bible that we ever see anybody enjoying the presence of the Lord is in the book of Genesis where God came down in the cool of the day and walked and talked with Adam and Eve. I've tried to place myself in Adam's place. I've tried to feel what it would feel like just walking and talking with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about physically being able to reach out and touch him. I don't know where you've ever thought about that or not. But what a glorious time that may have, that must have been in the Garden of Eden while they were walking and talking with the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, we know that sin separated that, that presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord came down as he always did and Adam and Eve had hid themselves from the presence of God. I don't want to ever do that. I want to walk and talk with the Lord Jesus Christ until it comes time for me to leave this old world. I love to fellowship with you. I love to talk with you. I love to walk with you. But my friend, there's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be some times in your life when you'll thank God for his presence and know that he is real and feel his presence. His presence is something you can feel. It's not something that you just imagine. It's something that you can feel. I failed him in my truck, even though it's a Toyota. And I know that you have failed him, and God help, in a Dodge. And I know that you have failed him in the cars that you drive and in the home where you live. There's nothing like knowing the presence of God is with you in this old life of ours. How awful it must have been for him to go out in the darkness and out into the night without the presence of the Lord. The book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27 says Christ in you, the hope of glory. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, it says Christ liveth in me. Think about that now for a moment. The day you got saved, the Holy Spirit in the, in, moved into your heart and life and he represents the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That means you'll never go anywhere without the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say hallelujah for his presence. <laughs> then he went out into the darkness without the power of God. Not just the presence of God, but the power of God. In, a chapter, in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, Jesus gathers his disciples together and he's going to send them out two by two. But before he sends them out, he says, I'm going to give you power over all diseases, over anything that might hinder you, over anything that might touch you or harm you. I'm going to give you power over all of those things. And my friend, God hasn't changed one iota. In the book of Luke chapter five and verse 17, it says the power of God was present to heal them. In Luke chapter nine and verse 43, the Bible says they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. I'm here to tell you God is a God of magnificent power. 
When the sun shines, it's nothing compared to the power of God. Moon and stars that he hung in the sky, when they shine, is nothing compared to the power of God. The power of God can move mountains. Amen. Amen. The power of God can still save from sin. The power of God can keep us saved. The power of God can make us happy while we live here on this old earth. Thank God for the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Judas went out in the night without the power of God. He also went out in the night without the presence and the promise of the comforter. The comforter had not yet come when Judas walked out into the night. The comforter did not come until Jesus died and went to heaven. And when Jesus went to heaven, he promised us that he'd send a comforter that would lead us and guide us and teach us and uh, help us to understand the truth. And on the day of Pentecost, that promise descended from heaven in the person of the Holy Ghost of God. And though Jesus doesn't walk this earth anymore, and God's sitting in heaven, his Holy Spirit is present everywhere we go. Amen. He is our comforter. He is the one that we rely upon. He's the one we depend upon. I don't know whether you've ever done this or not, but it'll do you good. When you get out of bed every morning, just say, hello, Holy Ghost. Amen. He's present when you open your eyes. Right? He's present when you close your eyes. He's present when you're facing danger. And everybody in this building could make the statement that some time or the other in your life had it not been for the leadership and the power and the guidance of the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't be sitting in this auditorium this morning sound like you are. He is our safety keeper, thank God. He's our watchdog, if I can use that phrase. He is everything to the child of God. He is what keeps us straight. He's the one that convicts us. He's the one that reveals truth to us. We could not make it without the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Judas went out into the night without the promise of the comforter. Judas went out in the night without the promise of the second coming. I don't know how much Judas knew about the days ahead for the Lord Jesus Christ. God revealed to his disciples what was going to happen. But I think Judas missed all of that. I think he sold out the Lord before he ever found out that Jesus was going to come back to this old earth again, that he was going to have to leave, that he was going to have to die. I think Judas missed all of that. Look in chapter 14 and verse 3. Why well, I love these verses. Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Boy, that receives a hallelujah right there and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I know you know that verse, but it's still one of the greatest verses in the Bible. It tells me that we have a promise that Jesus Christ is coming again. Listen, I don't know about you. Well, I do, I think. <laughs> but that's just a phrase we throw around. I'm tired and sick of this old world of ours. It's getting worse and worse. You can't even go to Walmart anymore without sinning. Huh? I got so mad the other day. Down at Walmart I'm talking about. I mean, I got plum frustrated. I saw a sign that said prices lowered to for $7.50. The previous price was $3. Now you figure it out. 
They lied to us. Am I right? I could buy two before the sign went up for six bucks. Now they're going to make another dollar and a half on me because they put it on special. Isn't that amazing? I don't know. That's just one thing that I'm sick of. I'm sick of the sin in this old world. I'm sick of Christians being made fun of. I'm sick of them trying to get rid of the Bible. I'm sick of them closing universities and chapels on the universities and taking away the Bible and taking away songbooks. I'm just tired of this old world. I'm glad, thank God, that I have a hope in me that one day the Son of God's going to step out on the clouds and come back to this old world and take us home to heaven. I say hallelujah. Look forward to that day. One more thing. Judas went out into the night without peace in his soul. Judas hung himself. I did the funeral a few years ago. One of my best friend's brother climbed on top of the bridge over Interstate 85 and Highway 221. He'd had a lot of trouble in his life. His marriage had just recently busted up. And he told somebody, I got to do something to get out of this mess. And he timed his jump to where he, when he did jump, he jumped right in front of a tractor and trailer. Of course, killed him. And, uh, I tried my best to find out that tractor and trailer's name and finally did. I can imagine how he felt. It wasn't his fault. And I called him and told him who I was and that I was going to be doing the funeral. He said, I sure would hate to be in your shoes. And I said, sir, I just want you to have some peace over what happened and know that it's not your fault and the family don't hold no ill will against you whatsoever. He broke down on the phone and cried. And he said, I need that kind of peace. That's not hard. I mean, it is hard for somebody to get over something like that. It would be me. But here is Judas. He's been found out for who he is. Jesus said he was a devil from the beginning. Now he sold his soul and in front of all the disciples and everybody else, he's been found out. And he thinks the only way out of it is to go out into the night time and hang himself. That means he left this old world without any peace whatsoever in his heart. Chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Isn't that a peaceful verse? Don't that bring peace to your heart? Look down at verse 27 in that same chapter. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. The world can't give any peace. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I've got peace in my heart today knowing that my sin has been taken care of. It's gone. Man may not forget a lot of things that I've done, but God has. And he's the only one that counts. For I'm covered by his blood, my sin's under his blood, and God can't see through his son's blood. Amen. My sins are gone. We used to sing a song. You ask me why I'm happy, I'll just tell you why. Because 
my sins are gone. Boy, that's the greatest thing that you could ever know. And that'll bring peace to your heart. And that'll bring peace to your soul. And you can lay down at night and sleep like a baby, not wondering about what's going to happen down the road. Judas went out. End of the night, end of the darkness, without any peace. Let's stand together, please, with their heads bowed.